set myself a budget of two and a half grand. The criteria for today is it's got to be a category in. I don't want anything that's too crazy. And like Bonus. Sold on approval. Alright you guys, so it's the next day here and I did win something in the auctions yesterday. This is ultimate transparency. As you can see, the sale price was... But today's delivery day. Let's jump in my car, head down to the garage, and check out the car. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode from Salvage Nation. This episode is going to be a special one, something different. I'm trying it. Um, like I said, I've set myself a budget of two and a half grand. Excuse the noise downstairs, they're still doing a bit of work. But like I said, in the thumbnail, I've set myself a cash budget of two and a half grand at Copa Auctions, and I want to see what that can get me. So, I'm not even going to waste any time, I'm not looking for anything in specific. We're just going through all the auctions of today, seeing what we see. If you see anything, we'll get it and we'll go ahead. If you don't, I'll try again tomorrow. But let's get in, I want to see what I can get for this. I've seen a few that I've added to my watch list, I'm going to show you that whilst keeping an eye at the auctions today as well. The criteria for today is it's got to be a category in, I don't want anything that's too crazy and like I said, a budget of two and a half grand including fees and I'm going to show you how I navigate Copa to get the best deals. So guys, like I said, I always like to just utilise the filters at the side and I've filtered out all the cat ins and now I can choose from whatever I'm seeing here. First of all, I saw this Porsche 2008 Cayman. <laughs> it's only at six grand right now and there's a buy it now fee of eight grand. That is nuts. Eight and a half grand. It's at six, seven right now. But let's check it out. I just want to go over this one and then we'll go over to something more budget. Obviously, this is not for now, but one day, one day, we'll be buying these kind of cars for fun and you guys will be watching us rebuild them. <laughs> It's got some minor damage on the front bumper. Yeah, that's where it gets interesting. Look at the rear end. So the rear end has sustained a bit of damage. That looks like a rear bumper. And I've never worked on one of these Porsches where the engine is in the back of the car. So I don't know what's hiding behind there, but I would love to get stuck into that. On this side of the rear, there's not much damage. That looks fine. Like this looks like a really, really good buy. I wonder why is it so cheap? The engine is running. I always check those pictures to make sure that the engine is running. The mileage don't look too bad. 55,000 miles on the clock. Everything seems fine. Um, but look at that. Minor damage. That will be running and driving. And it's a Cayman, so it's not like the base model. So I'm just going through the list and seeing exactly what is happening right here and there's so many cars that's what i like about copa copa has just got a ton of selection a lot more than some of the other smaller companies and i know that copa fees through the roof and i know that you know copa have got their reputation for being dodgy dealers or for hiding things but this is why you just need to be vigilant but one thing that needs to be said is no one in the uk is beating copa for just the selection of cars that they've got so I'm just going through, I quite like this 2012 Audi A4. What is going on here? Everything is gone. i just refresh this page. Okay. All right guys, so I don't understand what's happening with my computer. It's playing up a little bit, but I'm gonna hopefully refresh, restart, get into the auctions. I've, I've already seen a few cars that I quite like. I've added them to my watch list and I'm gonna be watching the auctions very, very keenly. Um, I don't wanna give it too much away. Um, if I do win one, then we're gonna check in there. So let's jump in. Let's jump into this. Um, let's get into the auctions and then hopefully I'll win something. So let's go.
Alright you guys, so it's the next day here and I did win something in the auctions yesterday. It was so frustrating. I bid on about five different cards, kept missing that. However, I bought something, but the reason why I didn't show you yesterday is because it had this whole sold on approval thing where you where Cold Park will counter offer if it hasn't reached a certain amount. And this card didn't. Now I, I reckon I got it at a reason a very, very good price. Not even reasonable, very, very good price. I'm very happy with the price that I won it for. I'm gonna show you all of that in a second, but if you guys are ever bidding and you get this sold on approval and Cold Park have offered you something, I reckon if the gap between what you've won the car for and what they want is around five, six hundred pounds maximum, stick at what you are, stick at what you want it for and more times often than not, they'll just give it to you. A lot of people panic and they, they up their offer and they, and Cold Park just wait it out. I let them do the waiting and I just crack on with my day and I just got the email to tell me that I have won so that means that they accepted what I won the car for and not what they wanted to um, I hope that makes sense let me show you the car that I've got and how much I pay for it and you tell me what you think ready like I can't believe I won this car for the price that I want it at let me know what you think here we go boom wait for it check it out guys I actually won a 2013 Audi A3 Sport Turbo now this car I reckon is a guaranteed money maker. First of all, it's a very popular car. It's a three door car, so I'm targeting a more younger audience. It's a category in, so the damage shouldn't be too bad. That means it hasn't got any nasty structural damage. It's got the engine start program. Now, a lot of people always ask, what is this engine start program thing about? Engine start program simply means that the car starts whilst it's been at the cold part yard. However, it doesn't run and drive. And you will normally get that with cars that's got suspension damage. And wait until you see that side, the car has got some suspension damage. But before I show you the car, let's go through more of the stats. So the secondary damage is minor dents and scratches, but this is where I got excited. The pre-accident value is £8,575. Like I said, I take that for a grain of salt, but when I tell you how much I got this car for, you will see why I'm so excited. It's a hatchback, it's a wire, it's a 1.4 turbo, so that's gonna be that small engine, cheap to insure, cheap to tax, and it will have a turbo on it, so it will be a nice, nippy little car to drive. Six-speed manual, um, because it's the sport version. Um, it's petrol, so it's ULEDs compliant. It's got the keys, no V5, I'm prepared to wait for it. I'm not in too much of a rush to flip this one, so sometimes I normally get cars that only comes with the V5, it will say V5 on file, but I'm happy with that. Let's see what's in the additional information. It's got navigation system, that's good to know. Number of keys, one. Um, wheel type, alloy wheels, number of wheels, four, I don't understand. Roof spoiler, that's nice. DAB, radio, that's nice. Electronic parking, brake. Once again, it's got some really, really nice features and I'm very, very happy with what I'm seeing. So, let me show you a few more of the pictures. So as you can see, lot sold. Before it didn't say sold, it was sold on approval and I was waiting. And just to show you, I literally, there we go, lot one. So as soon as I got that email, that's when that kind of status changed. But check it out. And now you can see why it's the engine start program. Boom! Ah, guys, that looks horrible, right? But from my knowledge, this is a front wheel drive car, so that I'm, I'm expecting the wishbone to be gone. Because it's, normally I wouldn't just buy a car like this, but because it's category N, I'm, I'm banking on the fact that this top chassis leg should be fine, or the arm should be fine. It shouldn't have too much damage in there. And by the looks of it, I'm hoping that the rads are relatively okay. Um, once again, from my years of experience working with damaged cars, I'm looking at that and I'm anticipating Unless it's a kind of like a nasty surprise, I'm not anticipating too much. But look at it, the car just looks fresh, it looks clean, and it's a kind of it's a late model car, TFSI, so I know it's gonna have that turbo on there. All around the car looks relatively clean, and I know you can't just go by the looks, but it looks relatively clean. It's got these nice chunky sport seats. Um, let me just try to zoom that for you. Look at those seats, it's got a nice sporty interior. Now, as you can see right there, it needs an airbag kit, but on these Audis actually, it's really easy to change the airbag um, and I've done so many of them. These dashes, they'll come in and out really, really quickly. So I'll just get a complete airbag kit for that. Um, but it's got that um, disappearing screen right there and it's got the control for the navigation, etc., etc. So that will make someone very, very happy. Like I said, I'm targeting young drivers who are looking for nice, cheap cars to run. And yeah, I think this fits the bill. Look at the interior. It's got a nice ISO fix around the back. Look at the engine bay as well. So, I'll go back up to this picture here. 
You see how nasty that looks? I'm pairing it up with this picture as well. And as you can see, that's the chassis arm there that I was talking about. Chassis arm seems all right. Once again, TFSI engine. I know what this engine is and I know the performance that it can give and I know just what to expect basically. Um, but more importantly, it's about the repair. And if I had opened up this picture and you saw kind of like this area all mangled and stuff, I wouldn't have bothered. But it's a category in car. And like I said, this picture confirms that there's no major damage up there. So I'm simply expecting down below to have like a wishbone and maybe a suspension arm or maybe like a shop tower. But once again, I'm expecting to just have parts that I can buy and replace. Going down, Another thing that I always check for is when they take this picture, have a look, this is number one, and you can see the car is on and it's idling. It's idling just below a thousand RPMs, which is where it should be. And I can't see any engine light on. I always check for engine lights and everything that I've seen on the car, those, those are the corresponding lights. So I know that that front driver wheel is completely busted. So there's the traction light that's off because I'm expecting some of those wires must be broken. Obviously the airbags have gone off. So that's why the airbag light is on. And other than that, there's no other crazy light that I can see there's nothing that I'm overly bothered about there so it's all plus plus going down once again they kind of zoomed in so in the other it's all about going through the pictures guys so on the top pictures right here and the other pictures we saw the top well in this picture we can see the bottom here and as you can see this bottom chassis leg here seems fine once again it's a category N so I'm not expecting any damage down there Moving around, headlights here seems fine. This passenger side seems fine. Um, here's the interior again, clean interior, and the knee airbag is gone, but I'll pick that up in the airbag kit, no problem. On the underneath of the car, I'm glad that they started doing these um, undercarriage photos, so you can see there's no other damage, but up here you can see it's, it's literally missing that wheel. Um, everything seems to be fine on the doors, alloys seem fine, I'll keep those alloys, I won't do much, probably do a little refurb with them because of this one, but yeah, I'll probably do a refurb, could potentially paint them black, I don't know, we'll see when the car comes down, but like you can see, it's got the sports steering wheel, but it needs an airbag um, right there. That's the antenna for the navigation, and there's a really a top spec car. Now, as you can see right there, the current amount due, let's go down and break it down. So, I actually bidded £1,750. And I said to you guys, I always stick to my budget. If it went over that, I would not have done it. So my maximum bid actually on this car was 1,800 because like I said, my budget is 2.5. And I want to get the car and get it delivered for under 2.5. And I anticipated the fees. So I said 1,800 is worth it for that car. They actually wanted 2,200. And the final bid on the car was even below my maximum bid and I did not budge. I stayed, I didn't even, I didn't even respond. And then I got the email to say that I won. So I was really, really surprised. So they tried it. So let's break it down to see what those fees are about. So guys, this is ultimate transparency. As you can see, the sale price was 1,750. My maximum bid was 1,850. And I didn't even watch it. I didn't even budge. I made sure I stayed there. <laughs> my finger was like, do not press it, do not touch it. I didn't hit that bid button and I ended up winning it for 1750. The buyer fee, 189, that's extortionate. Internet bidding fee, that used to be 15 pounds, now it's 55 pounds. So every car you win, 55 pounds. Lock retrieval, like this is like getting your car towed by the police and they're telling you you have to pay them to, 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 to tow it away basically. So lock retrieval, when you go there, they go get your car on the forklift and bring it out 40 quid for that what i don't understand and then vat on top anyway it is what it is and the total expenditure that i've paid thus far is 2090 pounds and 80p let me know what you think of that let me know how you feel so guys there you have it the auctions have been a success so far um i'm happy with what i've got i'm still well on the budget let me know what you think so far um i'm gonna now either sort out uh, getting it delivered to me or i'm gonna go get it myself i'm not 100 sure yet but hopefully we're gonna see the car once it comes down and hopefully it tallies up with what I showed you in the pictures. So I'll see you in the cars here. Alright you guys, so fast forward about five days. Um, I had to pay a late payment fee on the car because my delivery driver got held up yesterday. But today's delivery day. Let's jump in my car, head down to the garage and check out the car.
There you have it, guys. Cat is out the back. Audi A3 Sport. 2013, late 2013 model. You've seen the budget, man. This is ultimate transparency. So guys, as I said, TFSI, I don't know if it's starting, we're gonna check that now. But whilst it's up on a higher platform, I was a little bit apprehensive about this area here. But have a look, it's just a wishbone. So the wishbone, well, it's not just a wishbone, but I was more concerned about if the subframe was damaged. And as you can see, subframe is right there, subframe is right down at the bottom. The wishbone is completely knackered and it's popped out the ball joint right here. And I think the hub might be broken as well because look, you can still see the nut on the top. Um, but this is exactly what I was expecting and I'm happy if it stays like this. Um, uh, I wasn't expecting that, but I should have known or seen the state of the wheel. This is the drive shaft. But all of these are just normal things that I can replace. Complete shock, I can replace that. That's bent, that's broken. Um, so I should be able to get this car back up and running. A little bit more damage on the door than I expected, but once again, we can sort that out. Um, we'll have to just do, this is a cosmetic repair, just repair down here. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'm getting in the way. Let me let my guy here continue to take the car off and then I'll show you in a little bit more detail. Guys, it's here. I want you to tell me what you think of my budget build. After a preliminary walk around, I'm very happy. You've seen the full budget thus far on this car. I'm gonna show you the rest of the car more in depth, and I want you to tell me what you think. So let's go check out my 2013 Audi A3 Sport. Firstly guys, we're gonna start on the front end now. Remember, earlier on in the episode, I showed you how I scanned all the pictures and I analyzed the pictures to make sure here we are. Do you remember I showed you this top section here? And I know for a fact that if this top chassis arm was bent, and let me just show you the difference. There's a, let me distinguish the difference here. This is the chassis arm here, and this is a portion of the wing. So the portion of the wing is bent. You can see it's kind of, there's some rivets. On Audi and VW wings, it's kind of riveted in two parts right there. So this part is bent, but the actual chassis leg or the chassis arm is not so I'm happy about that and another thing that I paid close attention was is this is plastic if this bit had shifted up or down I would have expected to see a crack here or a crack kind of along the top in of the front slam panel and the front slam panel looks fine one thing that I am disappointed in is obviously I wasn't expecting to have no coolant and I've had a quick look inside here and have a look there's no coolant in here. And this is the thing, when you look at just the pictures, you do get some nasty surprises. So if you come down here, I don't know if you can see that right there. It's really unfortunate, but this is the water rad and the water rad has got a tiny crack. Um, maybe when it went over something, it just knocked this section here and it's caused a little crack there. But you know what? I'll just buy a new rad and replace that one and it shouldn't be any problems. Now moving along to this side, as we all knew, the wing is completely toasted, um, but we'll order a new wing. I wasn't expecting the drive shaft to be that badly damaged, but I should have expected it to be honest because of the way that the wheel was just hanging. Um, this is a front wheel drive car, um, so I will have to get a new drive shaft. But this is the brunt of the damage here. This is the wishbone. You can see the wishbone is completely bent. Um, so it's gonna need a complete suspension corner. So I'm gonna order the strut, wishbone, track rod arms, I'm gonna order the stabilizer linkage, and I'm gonna order a new drive shaft. And hopefully, 
that should then give me my suspension back. In addition to that, outside there, I had to look, the hub is completely gone as well. And even if I didn't see any damage on the hub, I would have still changed the hub because it's just good practice to do that. Um, back to this area here, have a look at the bonnet. The bonnet is sustained a little bit of damage there, but once again, the bonnet is in general good condition. There's nothing too nasty that I am worried about other than Copart bending it right here, probably trying to open the bonnet by force. But other than that, we should be able to repair everything on that bonnet. This headlight seems to be fine. I'll know more once I take it all the way out, but that seems to be fine. Obviously the front grille is broken. I'm gonna need a complete front bumper and grille. Good thing is though, this fog light assembly seems to be okay. So I can reuse that, I can salvage that. Other than that, other than the registration plate, I can't salvage anything else off this bumper. You can see the light around the back is all good. Now moving down to this driving side door, once again, in the pictures, I couldn't zoom in. When I zoomed in, it wasn't clear enough. So it sustained some damage to this door, but once again, I can fix this door, no problem. Um, there's not too much damage on that door, have a look. And one thing that I'm really happy about, I always like to see what the condition of the paintwork is in. Um, has it had any previous damage or anything? And I can't hear any filler. When you tap these panels, if it's got body filler underneath, it's a bit more dense and you can tell by the sound, but I can't tell anything by knocking on that. And you can see the paintwork just looks like the original factory paintwork. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy thus far. Whilst I'm here, let me show you the interior. Um, we already knew that we needed a dashboard um, and a complete airbag kit. Let me see. So these are not locked up, but once I put it on the diagnostic, I can tell. I went ahead off camera and I connected my phone to the entertainment system just to check it. And as you can see, my directory has come up right there. The Bluetooth system is working. It's got sat nav. It's a fully, fully loaded car. Um, it's just a shame about the dash because it, the damage is not too, too bad. And guys, also remember, I've shown you the full breakdown of this car. You know that I have only paid 1750 plus fees and just now because it's only come from Colpart Sandy I've just paid 130 pounds for delivery from Colpart Sandy down to East London um, which I'm happy with that it used to be a bit cheaper but since the gas prices and the petrol prices have gone up we now pay a little bit more of a premium on deliveries but I'm happy so far. Let me know what you think of the price that I paid. Let me know what you think of the car so far. And we're gonna continue walking around and I'm gonna show you the rest of the day. I've come back around to the passenger side and as you can see, passenger wing is completely fine. The passenger door is completely fine. That passenger rear quarter is completely fine. And on the roof, other than having a bit of dirt, grime and dust, there's no damage to that roof at all. Um, coming around to the rear once again, no damage, um, just dirt, grime, bird poop. <laughs> um, but that is what's expected when the car's been sat for a long time. The rear lights are working, everything on the rear seems to be working. And I wanna see what the engine is saying, I wanna see what the interior is saying. So now that you've seen all of the exterior of the car, let's jump inside and I'll show you the interior. So guys, the interior of the car, we already knew from the pictures, it's got these nice chunky cloth seats. The only thing that would make this interior nicer is if it was leather, but you know, you can't complain. It's a budget build, so these cloth seats will do the trick. There's one thing that I'm happy about. Take a deep breath, it smells fresh. There's no funky smells. How many times, let in the comments, I know it happens there all the time. How many times have you got a car from Copart and it absolutely stinks, or there's dog hair everywhere, or there's rat poop, or there's something that just makes it vile, but I love it when a car comes. And you can just generally see, other than obviously the blown dash, just look at the condition of the dash and you can tell that this car was well looked after and it's a very clean, nice, tidy car. Um, as you can see, you've got the control dials for the infotainment system there. It's quite a simplistic, this is the new kind of design coming out of Audi at the moment. It's got stop start right there. Um, it's a six speed manual, which is a 1.4 it's a six speed manual and it's got a 1.4 turbocharged engine. Um, so I'm very happy about everything that I'm seeing other than um, that airbag kit. Let me see if this one is locked up. Yep, I don't know why. Obviously someone was driving the car when it crashed, but the driver's seat is not locked up, but the rear, but the passenger seat is completely locked solid. Let's get in the back. The back, once again, I don't know if you can see that. 
It's got some kind of like dust and grime, but that's that should tidy up quite nicely. See, that one is all right. Check this one. That's okay. And this one is okay as well. Um, but yeah, there's nothing that I can see that I'm overly worried about. What's inside here? Got a little iPhone connector cable. Nothing inside. I was hoping to see the service book. That would have been great when I'm selling this car, but I can't see anything. What's this? Ah, it comes with the MOT certificate. Okay, so it expires um, on the 9th, 03 09 22. I will still do a new MOT, but it is good to know that it's got an MOT on it and at some point it was MOT then checked in the not so distant past. Whoever, once again, if you're watching this and you're the previous owner, like I said, the car is fresh and that person likes to be fresh. You've got some toothpaste in there and some tissues. Other than that, it's got this little MMI kind of box right there. I can see two slots for, what is it? Memory cards. And I think that this is the, this is the brain behind the screen. And this is what Audi and, uh, Audi and VW are doing this now. So they've got like the brains in the, all the brains for the screen is hidden, tucked away. And you've got a nice, slim, sleek screen just to simplify the dash a little bit. I'm happy with that. Okay, so over to the driving side. As you can see, all the light switches, everything works. I haven't seen anything that's broken. I like to check just to make sure that none of the switches are kind of messed up. None of the vents are broken. Everything seems to be intact. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing. Um, it's the later model car, so it's got the electronic parking brake. But what I want to do, I just want to start it. Um, it says that the power is all right. I just want to try to start it. I know that it hasn't got any coolant. However, I've checked the oil and it has got oil. And I should be fine to just start it for a few minutes just to show you guys and obviously to do my own checks. But clutch all the way down, get this airbag out of the way. Clutch all the way down. And it started straight up. I'm always a little bit anxious when I start up these cars for the first time when I've just received it because you never know like you don't want to ruin the engine or you might find that the engine is already ruined but I can't see any engine lights and if you remember earlier on in the episode I showed you when Colpart took the picture the car was idling just before one and I was looking to see if there was any engine lights or any sort of warnings and there's none the only warning that I've got is that the bonnet is open give it a little bit of revs it sounds good. I can't hear any knocking. I can't hear anything that's too worrying. Um, I want to see if the navigation is working. Ooh, navigation not enabled. That's interesting because on the HPI it did say that it's got navigation, but I'm not worried about that. Let's check the speakers. Like I said earlier, I've already connected my phone. So if I go to media, I'm not gonna go too much because I don't want to get an infringement, but yep, that's working. Um, go back to menu, have a look at that. Tone, car, mobile phone, navigation. Navigation not enabled. Um, I will connect it up to the diagnostics and just to see if there's anything that is wrong. But I'm happy. Guys, let me know what you think of what I've shown you thus far. What's this drive select? Audi drive select individual, efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic. Okay. All the buttons seem to be working and have a look at that. That disappears when you press that button. That's nice and tidy. Um, I'm hoping that it's not too much of a hassle to remove the dash with this type of screen in there, but I'm sure that I'll be able to crack it. No problem. But have a look at that. I'm very happy. The windows are working, that goes up fine. On that side, that goes up fine as well. Lights all good. And yeah, this is, horn is still working. All the buttons seem to be working all right. And, yep, I'm getting volume there. And yep, here's my mobile phone stuff, all good. So yeah guys, I'm happy. I am happy. Let me know what you think thus far. So guys, there you have it. You always have asked for more transparency, how I get my cars, how I get them delivered. I've shown you every step of the way so far and that's how we're gonna continue. 
You've seen the delivery now, the car is here and it's ready to get worked on. However, it's a Sunday afternoon, I got called in from at home, I was actually out with my family. Now I've just quickly come down to the unit just to open up so we can take delivery. So I'm not gonna, I've already ruined some of my nice clothes, but I don't wanna continue getting dirty and mucky. So this is where we're gonna end this episode. In the next episode, I'm gonna start tearing down all of that damage, all of this stuff is gonna come off. Hopefully I don't find anything too damning down there. Um, hopefully we can keep on a nice tight budget on this one. I'm not gonna be going crazy, we're gonna be rebuilding this car to stock and then I'm gonna be selling it. Or I might keep it, you never know. Um, I might sell my BMW M135i if a good offer comes in. Um, I might keep this one, you never know. Um, you tell me what you think I should do. Um, and this is really good in this episode like I said so I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope you found some sort of use from my time going over coal part and the bidding process etc etc and if you found it helpful please press the like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and like I always say keep it moving and I'll see you in the next one guys thank you for watching click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch click here to watch one of my previous episodes and like it said there, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We out.